Man nicht da, kann man. Es wird auch sein, krass. สวัสดีค่ะ Welcome to Stirling Castle in Scotland. Good day to everyone. I would like to tell you briefly about Stirling Castle. Stirling Castle was built late in late 12th century. It built on top of the hill called Stirling Hill. The hill it consisted with volcano rock which formed 350 million years ago. The castle was built for King James V. And he had commissioned the architect and artist around the world to complete it with Renaissance art style, which you can see today outside and inside the building. It's truly really beautiful. At one point, the King James took unwell. He passed away quite quickly at age 30, leaving his widow Mary the Guise to carry on his work. The castle had completed around 14th to 16th century with help with different generations. At the time, the castle had, be, had at the time the castle was the most used by many Scottish loyal residents, including Mary Queen of Scots. The castle had been through many bloody war during Scottish Independence War, and it had been seized at least eight times. Later on, Queen Mary the Guise herself had remarried and had many children who lived there and born there and died there. 
please see in the description for more information. We have a guide tour coming. It's a long film. You might be boring. Sorry about that. I hope you enjoy it. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you for listening. See you. Swadhi ka. Kola bawat yo yo kong Sterling Castle. Sterling Castle sang mer pan ko pi ma dai. Doi pa chao je mi kon sang. และท่านได้จ้างสถาปนิกศิลปินทั่วโลกมาช่วยในสมัยนั้นเรเนสซอนอาจเป็นที่นิยมและกำลังฟื้นฟูศิลปะนิยมทั้งแกะสลักไม้ภาพวาดหรือหินหรือพรมแต่ท่านยังสร้างมาเสร็จก็มาเสียชีวิตก่อนภรรยาที่ชื่อเมรี่มารับช่วงต่อจนสร้างเสร็จปราสาทใหญ่โตและสง่างามมากเป็นที่นิยมระหว่างพระเจ้าเหล่าขุนนางของสกอตสมัยนั้นรวมถึงแมรี่คีนอฟสกอตช่วงนั้นเขามีสงครามโลกระหว่างประเทศสกอตแลนด์และอิงแลนด์ปราสาทจึงได้ถูกยึดถึง8ครั้งต่อมาภรรยาของคิงเจมรี่ได้แต่งงานใหม่และมีลูกหลานสืบต่อกันมาซึ่งได้อยู่ในปราสาทเกิดแก่เจ็บตายที่นั่นและบางท่านก็ได้โยกย้ายไปเรื่องทั้งหมดจะเข้าไปในคลิปใต้ใต้คลิปนะคะแต่ทีนี้ก็จะมีไกด์ทัวร์เข้ามาค่ะแล้วก็จะไกด์ทัวร์นี่จะพูดยาวมากขอโทษนะคะขอบคุณมากค่ะ
out, but it's, a, it's just a little distracting while I'm trying to do the tour. Mm -hmm. Right, okay, have you been here before? That's the first question. No, I haven't. Uh -huh. Okay, one of you has, one of you has. Yeah. Well, the guided tour is just to give you an idea of what the place is like. There's far more of it open than there used to be. So if you come here before 1999, then the Great Hall there would have been off limits. And you'd find the palace as well, which was under restoration in the 2000s. So all that's open again. And uh, you can actually show people part of that. The Great Hall, this one here? The Great Hall's that one, yeah. I had, it's just being built, yeah? Sorry? It, being, it had been built, it had been refurnished. Yeah, it was built 500 years ago. Yeah. 500 years ago. It's been refurnished, going back, to, uh, finished in 1999. 1999. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, so yeah, the guided tour just shows you part of that. Um, what we do is we don't go straight to the buildings. There's quite a lot to the castle outside as well. So what we always tend to do is take you just beyond where the walls are here. And you can see what the castle used to look like from mm -hmm. the outside. When you're inside, yeah. filming and photography are okay. The only things you need to caution people about is find some of the chairs in the palace who've got silk cords across them. You ask people not to sit down on them, but that's the main restriction. Right, okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. So we'll take a walk just beyond here. We're kind of in the middle of the castle at the moment. It's best to actually start just through this way. Overall, we allow up to maybe about 40, 45 minutes. I think probably not as long as that because it's only just a few of us. Yeah. Now we're coming again. We enjoyed it so much. No. <laughs> thing to remember here is the gatehouse is now actually quite a different place from where it used to be. That's where you enter now. That's where you came in. But if you've been here going back 500 years ago, back when this is a royal castle, that was where you'd come in there. So it's higher up, the castle was smaller. It's why, even though we're obviously we could answer plenty of questions about this place, one of the questions I'd say I can't give you a real answer to is when people ask how old it is because you can see from the size and the styles within the different buildings of the castle, it's not built as one. All we can say is 900 years ago there was a small royal chapel on this site, just beyond where the palace, this building with the statues, just where this stands now, beyond that the chapel seems to have stood there. They actually did some archaeology work in the upper courtyard of the castle a few years ago and they've actually found bodies buried within it. So that would have been buried obviously in holy ground and probably during a siege, the castle's been under attack on different occasions in the past. So when they couldn't actually be taken outside for burial, it would have been the place to leave them. So it just seems to be within the shape of a small building. Have you been to Edinburgh Castle, by the way? Not yet. Yeah, I haven't Edinburgh been yet. Castle, um, it's got one building within it, very small. Uh, it's going back hundreds of years old. It's older than anything we have here, called the St Margaret's Chapel. So what that is there, it's, you know, that's a proper medieval building. That's what the chapel that stood here 900 years ago, if I'm going back in time, that's what this one would have looked like as well, pretty sure, pretty certain. But obviously, since then, a lot of development, a lot of this has been replaced, and uh, you've got the kind of look of the castle 500 years ago, not quite so old as that, but that's what it would have been from the outside. So that was your gatehouse, those were your outer defences, and the building above the gardens there in the 1540s, that's where the members of the Stuart royal family would have lived, including Mary Stuart, or Mary Queen of Scots, a famous member of the family. And she lived there as a child, also as an adult. Uh, she spent a number of years in France. She was married to the King of France at one point. After he died, she came back to Scotland, and for the next few years, part of her year would have been spent here at Stirling Castle and Edinburgh Castle, Linlithgow Palace, and so on, these other sites you can visit. So she would have known this. 
and you've got that again that view of the great hall that gold colored building you can see the south side of it here what you have where we're standing the outer defenses as they are now and they continue just along this way you've got some of the cannons there Yes, they're basically just adding to the levels of protection the castle has. In medieval times, you had really catapults, trebuchets to worry about, but eventually you're turning to obviously gun and cannon fire. There's marks actually of where there's probably been lead balls actually kind of gone into the stonework itself in the two towers of the gatehouse there, and there's missing heads and limbs of statues on part of the palace. So actually, cannon fire from outside has has damaged the building. So they're basically adding different layers to it. So that's why that the, the totally different there. See the the water there. That used to be the same height as the tower just to the right. Of it. Yes. Uh huh. And there used to be actually four towers instead of two. They did used to be a little bit taller as well. But if you can see the top layers of stonework in the yeah. gatehouse, the pointing between the stones is a bit more distinct. So that's newer. That's newer stonework. The last time the castle was ever attacked, it has been subject to kind of battles. There's been battles fought near here in medieval times. Uh, that tower, the, the crag in the distance, that stands just above where the Battle of Stirling Bridge was fought by William Wallace against the army of Edward the First of England. They're fighting over who should yeah, actually control the castle. You're quite close to one, not William Wallace, that's, that's the monument it's, there. It's, uh -huh, yeah. that's it's 1860, close. so it's centuries after the battle, but that's what it's commemorating. So in, independent war involved them as well? Basically, Edward I had captured this castle. He captured quite a few castles in southern Edward Scotland. Edward III, the King, the King, King of England. Ed, King, of King of England, England. yes, captured and, this one. Uh, yeah, uh -huh. and Wallace and Andrew de Moray, one of the other leaders of the Scottish army, tried to win it back. So you if you didn't back. have Stirling Castle, you had no access to the Highlands because basically all this flat land around where the castle stands, yes. uh, that's where you're going to find numbers of people travelling. Okay. Out to the east and west, it's more kind of hilly and mountainous. It's just the easiest place. So whoever holds this place has basically controlling access to the rest of the country. It's quite a big castle too, isn't it? Well, that's why it's important. So everybody but, wants uh, it. The reason you've got the gatehouse broken down now, if I take you a bit further forward in time, the last time the castle was ever successfully attacked is in the mid-17th century. It's 1740. It's no, longer, no, it's not the same people at all. Not the same it's, people. It's well after. It's well after that. By this time, Scotland and England have one king. They have one person ruling over them. Or they did, until not very long before that. The mid-17th century is the period usually known as the English Civil War. Yes. It should be called the War of the Three Kingdoms properly, because Scotland and Ireland are involved the as well. Yes, the War King, but I heard about you've that. Got, basically, you had, until not very long before this, King Charles I, King of Scots and King of England, and uh, he, is, he is deposed and beheaded. He is executed as a man of blood, basically seen as a traitor to his own people. But there's people who are against him, there are people who obviously fight for him, and that brings on the Civil War period. The Scots, because Charles was originally a Scottish king, he was actually born in Scotland, and um, most of the people north of the border still have some loyalty to him and the Stuart royal line. And um, it's complicated by the fact that Charles wanted a different form of religion than most of the Scots did. But as I say, he's a Stuart, he's a Scottish king. So Oliver Cromwell, who's the man who becomes the Lord Protector of England, he finds the Scots are rather difficult to deal with. And he actually launches a campaign quite like that of Edward I mm -hmm. in earlier times. He captures Stirling Castle, amongst others, or rather his general George Monk does. Yeah. And that's the last time anyone's ever had enough power to break through these break defenses. Through the so right. that gatehouse there, it used to be bigger, it used to have more towers on the outer side of it. Yes. But say George Monk and his men barricade, basically bombarded it. Uh, you'll still see small signs of damage in the bits that remain. The horn, the water. have been taken down yeah. completely uh -huh. because of the amount of damage they did. Yes. So that's the last time anyone broke in. See, Obviously that means Stirling Castle is not well defended enough. No. Fifty years later they start building this and it's never been successfully yeah. taken since no. then. No, yeah, because everything. I heard the, the King, King Bonnie, Bonnie, King Bonnie of Charlie. Ronnie, Ronnie Prince Charlie, yeah. Try. Uh, they tried, yes. Yes, um, he didn't. 1746 is the last time the castle was attacked. Yeah. Uh -huh. Not successfully in no, this case. No. Um, Charles Edward Stuart, or Body Prince Charlie, his army, they're not attacking from this side, they are out to the east. The east. So you'll oh, find there. actually back in the main big courtyard. Uh -huh. We'll see as we walk back. Red, there are red, quite red, a few cannons uh -huh. pointed that way. Yes. They're below the east walls of the castle, him and his Jacobite army. They're firing their guns upon it. They make some damage to the east face of the palace building, so they're well outside, but they still make some impact. 
what they don't have is enough firepower to actually break through these outer defences. These defenses, are here. These ones and the battery that runs along the castle's east wall. The castle's defenders keep them out. But as I say, there's signs of that Jacobite attack. If we come down here, so just up on the east side of the palace there, there's little paler blocks of stonework around the arches. And again, we've got statues with bits missing that's quite damaged on this side. So heads and limbs are kind of broken off. There's one of them going back only about 10 years ago during a very bad storm when the castle was closed. At one of the arms of the statue, uh, obviously something hit it, but it broke off then. So it's not all damage done from outside. Some of it's just kind of natural wear and tear. But uh, so that's showing still the signs of the Jacobite guns. The paler blocks are where later on, when the army had control of the castle, which they did from the 1600s to the 1960s, the Argyll and Sutherland Highlander Regiment were stationed here as their headquarters. Um, so they did quite a bit of repair work just in this building. You can see the difference in colour. But that's why you've got that gun battery with the cannons facing out to the east. So obviously you've got people protecting the main gate area, but you're also protecting that bit facing out towards Stirling Bridge, out to the land, the flatland east of the castle, which is another potential approach. And incidentally, the gun battery's been there since 1689. This is why it's difficult giving ages to the castle, because they keep building one thing on another. What is underneath it, you can see it's raised above the main level of the courtyard. There's actually a series of rooms beneath that. We only found that out back in about 1921. I think that was the year they carried out some archaeological work in this courtyard. They dug down beneath and they found actually it wasn't just kind of solid ground. It was basically what looked like chambers filled with rubble. Wow. And one bit, which seemed to be a big fireplace, which had been filled in. Um, there's enough evidence that some of the castle plans survive from a few hundred years back. It tells us that that's where the great kitchens were. So if you were the king, um, if you went back to the times of the Stuarts ruled Scotland, if you were King James IV in 1500, you had probably some small kitchens just below where your royal palace was. But if there was going to be a feast held in the Great Hall, this big building here, which we'll get a chance to look inside shortly, um, then you want much bigger kitchens too. So they were actually beneath where the guns are now. And if you go to the Master Gunner's house, that building with the windows that looks onto it, there are steps beneath that, and you can walk down below into the kitchen entrance that we've kind of reconstructed. There's so quite a lot of food prepared in there. And obviously some of the things are very local. Local farmers are supplying the castle. But you've got ships coming up the river, not very far from here, a couple of miles away. Ships are unloading their goods. And their goods not just from England, from other parts of Europe. You've got, for example, trade routes with the Far East to bring in spices, things like cinnamon, mace and nutmeg, and sugar from the Mediterranean. So it's all really expensive, it's coming from a long way away. But for royal kitchens like these, they could afford it, and especially times like Christmas or Easter, the big religious festivals of the year, then they're probably making use of expensive stuff. We've got recipe books in the great kitchen, so you can see what kind of things they made. The great hall, dominates the courtyard. We've got steps that lead you up to it now, but it's probably better we actually take a walk around. There's actually a pathway up beyond, and there you can see where all the royal buildings are. Uh, we've got the main door on the other side. Yes. So the Great Hall's look. colour, by the way, it used to be you would have seen far more of this colour, and the palace, for example, would have matched it. It's not paint. You can probably see just about where there's layers of it coming off. It's basically, it's a lime plaster called Harlan. And it's meant to give a bit of protection to the stone of the building. And we get, as I say, quite wild see, weather here sometimes. Yeah, that's just, yeah, yes, just at a lower yes. level. That'll have to uh -huh. be recovered. Recover, yes. Um, so this is protecting the stone, but the main thing about the colour, it's called King's Gold. And cool. gold is a royal colour back then. It's just marking out something different from anything you would see in Stirling below. But it's not just this building at one point, it's, it's all the buildings up in this top part of the castle. The statues on the palace, and these ones are in better condition because they've never had anyone firing on them. All right. Um, uh -huh. The statues here, uh, they would have been against a gold-coloured building. It, there's little traces of the Harling still on this, just here and there. But they've actually found pieces of colour, different, different coloured pigments on the statues, so they were painted. 
And that's much more common than people realise. Modern techniques using infrared laser scan, um, they've been able to look at things like this, pieces of stonework, not just this country, go back to old Roman statues, and they find instead of being plain stone, even kind of quite, you know, quite bright marble, that was actually painted over. So statues were usually colourful, not plain as we assume they would be. Not plain, yeah. No. So you've got just a row of them here on the outside of the palace. And that leads you all the way up to the entrance to this building. And there's colleagues of mine in the palace who are actually running guided tours. last about 20 minutes or so. They run them every hour. So I will leave this building alone for the time being. So we're covering that. So we'll head towards the great hall and chapel which are on this side. order. We've got four royal buildings. It's the best place to enter them from here. I call that the palace. It's one of two palaces. If you went back to about 1497, <laughs> generation before this was built, that is actually the palace, this building here. It's called the King's Old Building. It's the this name one that seems here? to be given yeah, yes. up at the top. Yes. It's the name that's been given over quite a few generations. Mm -hmm. So, King of Scotland, King James IV, he ruled in the 1490s and early 1500s. That was where he would have lived. Mm -hmm. It was changed quite a lot by the army in later years. Up to the 1960s, the Argyles Regiment. I think they had offices, they had, I think, some living quarters in there too. So, we've given it over now to the Military Museum just to showcase that later bit of history. So it's quite a good way to continue after the guided tour if you're looking for other ideas. Um, but because we've got this second set of palace apartments built in the 1540s, only a generation later, uh, built when James V, son of James IV, had a bit more money, and deciding to build his wife, Mary of Guise, an expensive wedding present, we've got the whole new set of royal rooms there. They've been restored to how they would have looked when they were brand new. So that's something, as I say, they can show you in a little tour of the palace if you want. You can walk around by yourselves as well, you don't need to join the tours. Um, you can have statues in here as well. Statues, there probably would have been statues in the niches there. Yeah. They haven't got records yet of what they were. Um, I suspect the reason there are no statues in there now, we probably would have had some religious figures. Um, once you get to the Scottish Reformation, then if you've got images, stained glass windows, um, statues, for example, of Jesus and the Virgin Mary, they tend to take Sacrament. them away. <laughs> um, because obviously it's all about preaching. This is getting away from the imagery of the Catholic Church. So I suspect that they would have actually had probably holy figures as kind of protectors originally. If we got more evidence, then I think we might actually try and put them back just to complete mm -hmm. the look of it. The statues we've got up there now on the Great Hall there's two lions and two unicorns, just creatures which are in the Scottish Royal Heraldry. So they're right up at the top, a bit of gold decoration on them. But this yeah, building goes hall. along with the, the King's Old Building. This is James IV's Great Hall. And there with the gold. There's still no one there. But mentioning um, changes in the this would have been the Chapel of St Michael. And it's described quite well because it's where in 1543 the young Mary Queen of Scots is crowned. So it's a bit unfortunate there's nothing of it left, but her son in the 1590s, her son King James VI, decides this building is not conveniently located. The Great Hall is being kind of partly blocked by it. It's a bit old fashioned, they like to update things obviously. <laughs> And it's also, it's a Catholic chapel as well. It's so they, refitted. They knock it down? He's, yes. He knocks it down, yes. Uh -huh. 1594, he knocks this down. So now get a flat. And he builds it in this form here. And he built that one. It's in a better place, to be honest. But obviously, it means there's a whole building to be lost. Uh -huh. So 1594, this is when this building's finished. And after that time, there's nothing added to this, apart from little bits of repairs here and there. And if you're wondering what the scaffolding is, there's actually a central courtyard in the middle of the palace. A series of rooms around the inner courtyard. And um, someone mentioned here the other day that Hollywood Palace has got something like that as well. And it's just basically in that courtyard, terribly scaffolding built to rebuild some of the chimneys. So just where there's been a bit of damage, we're obviously making, making amends. So that's what these are. 
Yeah, uh -huh. and that's because Falkland Palace, you're going to quite a similar period to that one. So you'd have basically the same team of people and the same kind of masterminds behind them. So we've got names in the records that match up people who worked here. Mm -hmm. So that's what they are. I've got a peek inside the Great Hall so you can see what sort of size of space it's got. It's obviously the gardens. are separate. We'd have these trestle tables quite commonly in places like this. They'd usually be a bit smaller and lighter weight than this and it's meant so that when the hall is not in use, you can kind of lift things out. Tabletop separates Space. There's probably at least a hundred men gathered inside. And the king would be present, although he's separate, he stays up here at this end of the hall. Uh, this part's called the dais, he's raised the step, so it's like you've got a fire and this one which we could actually still use. Oh it makes a lot of difference to that fire stick. <laughs> <laughs> But if you're going to make use of it for something like a royal feast, then you obviously have not this high table here. You have far more of these. Slightly smaller, I think, not quite as heavy as this one. The next one down would be below the step of the dais. So they're a little bit lower down. It just marks out who's the most important in the building, and that's the people sitting here. Cold stone and plaster walls, and it just makes things warmer. So, yeah. When they were doing the restoration, they matched up as closely as they could. They just made sure. What we have here, unlike most of the buildings, we had some of the painted decorations, not intact, but we had enough of them. We did some restoration work back in the 1990s. There's a couple of different options you've got. If you've got practically nothing, it's best to come start from scratch and see if you're going to be doing paintwork. This is a, quite a modern ceiling we have here now. What yeah. we're waiting for is more evidence as to what the original chapel ceiling looked like. Um, they're obviously, before that, they did actually have
about racing. Go ahead. Um, in Scotland and the castle as well is the Jacobite Risings. In fact, the very last time the castle was attacked was during the Jacobite Risings of Bonnie Prince Charlie. It's just before Culloden. Uh, he fails to get into the castle and then the Jacobites head further north to Culloden, which this is um, depicting there. It's where the, where the army? Yeah. The black, the black and the red, what is that? The red, the red coats, the British army. The red and British army. And then the, the Jacobites. Black. Jacobites are well, black. There'll be a mix of mainly Highlanders. So when you went down, this is on the way back, having been down south, hoping to get to England. But yes. at Derby, Bonnie Prince Charlie, he's the one on the white horse. The white horse. He'd been advised to turn back at Derby. It wasn't, he, they persuaded him that it, it didn't look as though it was gonna, they were gonna make it. No. This is, you're in the Queen's rooms of the palace. The uh -huh. palace was built by James V. So on this side with the unicorn and the lion rampant, the red lion, is the king's court, is mm -hmm. the king's, connected to that, the queen's arms. Queen being um, Mali de Guise, yes. Mali de Guise, the one and there. Got, yes, yes. yes. So that is, one there. It's listed in the Lyrian, which is a legendary type of falcon bird. And the, the unicorn one there. The unicorn is the king. The king and, and the lady. The queen. The queen. The, the the queen. The king's and queen's arms linked together. Linked together. With the love, love I see. Okay.